Next question, Chris. Okay, so another playing one. How to change chords without messing up or stopping your strumming? Okay, I have one tip that I could give on that one. Uh -huh. And then I want to know your example probably for another little riff or situation. Uh -huh. But there's one great thing that um, everybody does and beginners need to know about, which is especially when you have, say, an eighth strumming pattern. So a one and two and three and four and... Typically, on that last up strum, that is your cue to make sure you're lifting off of that, that chord and getting down for the next one. So if we want to go for the tricky change of a C to an F when we need a little bit of time to change, one and two and three and four lift. And in context, even if you lifted off all fingers, But also what you're trying to do, for example, between that C and the F that we learned earlier, the third finger doesn't have to move. So also being aware if any fingers can stay down, uh, what we can call an anchor finger or a pivot finger. Um, there's another one between the D chord and the G chord like this, where that third finger again stays down. And of course, that's where I would start with my beginner lessons with the easiest two chords, I would say, um, that we can play a lot of songs with, which are the E chord and the A chord, and that first finger kind of stays down and we pivot around it, but again... Three, four, and one, two, three, four. Actually lifting off on the last up strum that mm -hmm. you do, and that's presuming that we're getting down um, again for beat one. Do you have an example or anything? Just helping yeah, change chord, so, really? Um, I mean, that for the open chords, that's the exact type of thing I would talk about. So with bar chords, mm -hmm. we can take it there. The, um, you know, it's really this motion all the time. So if you can practice cleanly moving mm -hmm. the bar. And even just, even just that spying, you know, the fret that you're going to move to yeah, and then exactly. moving to it. And you'll Can get you that, get that? Getting that clear sound. And then you just think of it as two components. So there's that component, and then there's whatever your fingers are doing. Can you practice moving almost like an E to an A? Yeah, Can practicing open these? chords, E and A, just with your three weaker fingers. Uh -huh. That that always uh, makes makes people really, yeah. really reassess Doesn't what they're doing with their fingers. But it's that exact same thing to change, you know, between any bar chord. It's, it's the same it's the skill same. and, you know, the first finger bar and then what, the uh -huh. second, third and fingers. And then even if we're talking about moving bar chords like so where maybe G to a D, again, it's just both of those components, that motion and this motion. And then you practice putting them together. Mm -hmm. And with bar chords, bar chords may be seen as harder to play. Yeah. But for coordination with strumming hand, it's kind of easier because the strumming hand is just always kind of going away like the one and two and three and four that we were doing before. It's much to and it's actually it, yeah. this hand that, that can be doing a lot work. of the work. So there the rhythm is being created by me relaxing this hand and the strumming hand it's is always hand. just doing that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, Plenty of songs do that, plenty of Jason Mraz songs, plenty of Jack Johnson songs do exactly that kind of thing. Strumming hands, always hitting all the strings all the time. It's not about the D's and U's with your strumming. It's not about, is it down, up, down, up, down. The strumming hands always moving and you're choosing what rhythm to hit. Yeah. That would be the focus and the change that I would do.